This video, produced by the English Betonk Association, is designed for coaches, clubs or individuals to use as a basic guide to the sport of betonk. It demonstrates the basic techniques of the game and attempts to explain the rationale behind such factors as choosing the right ball, the delivery of various shots to cope with a variety of playing conditions and also basic tactics. It also suggests practice routines which you can use to improve your skills and ideas on teamwork and making the best use of the abilities of the players in your team. There are six elements involved in the technique for throwing a ball, whether you're shooting or pointing. To begin with, let's look at the way that you hold a ball. Your grip. Holding a ball properly is the most important factor in being able to control what happens to it once it's left your hand. Ball measure between 70.5 and 80 millimetres in diameter and you need to play with ball that are the right size for your hand. If the ball is too big for you then when you turn your hand over you will have to grip it too tightly and this will seriously affect your control when you let go. As a general rule you should hold the ball with your fingers close together and your thumb resting alongside. Your fingertips should reach at least halfway round the ball and you should be able to hold the ball with your hand relaxed. Another reason for holding the ball this way is that it then allows it to spin backwards in the air off your fingertips which increases your control of what it does after it's landed. The legal weight range for competition ball is 650 to 800 grams and it's important that you do not opt for ball which are too heavy. Shooters in particular need to be aware that throwing balls at the heavier end of the range throughout a day of competition can be very tiring. And so most tend to opt for ball weighing 700 grams or less. Younger players should also be encouraged to play with the lightest available ball. The ground surface that you play on, the piste, can vary enormously between different playing areas called terrains, or even on the same terrain. It may have a hard or soft base. It may have a thin or thick covering of a variety of top dressings or none at all. It may have large stones or fine grit and it may be perfectly flat or covered with hills and hollows. It may also have various degrees of slope from edge to edge or corner to corner and finally it may change character completely depending on whether it's wet or dry. All these variations mean that you need to be able to adapt your style particularly as a pointer, to achieve whatever you're trying to do. And the right grip and the right ball are crucial to that aim. Your stance. You need to think about the way that you stand in a circle, whether pointing or shooting. If you're right-handed, you should stand with your right foot pointing towards the direction of throw and your left slightly behind and at a slight angle to the left. This has the effect of moving your right hip out of the way to allow you to swing your arm in a straight line towards the target and also to give you some sideways stability. Left-handers need to reverse these guidelines. It's important to keep your feet quite close together since the minimum size circle is 35 centimeters in diameter and both feet must be completely within the inside of the marked line when you throw. If you get used to standing with feet wide apart it will affect your technique if you're forced to play with them much closer together. You should feel comfortable, balanced and relaxed before you begin the throwing movement. Backswing. To make sure that you can throw to a full range of distances and heights, it's important to lift your arm behind you in the highest backswing that you can comfortably manage. Not only does it give you a longer acceleration of your arm to throw further, but it also gives your arm the best chance of creating a straight line of throw. Follow through. When you swing through from behind, you should try to keep your arm as straight as possible in the direction that you want the ball to go and follow through with a full extension of the arm to about head height. Release. Unless you deliberately want to spin a ball sideways, you should try to keep your hand level as you open it up at the end of the swing to give the ball a chance to spin backwards off your fingertips. Most players who see their ball skidding off line when they land are unconsciously putting side spin on them, usually from right to left in the case of right-handers. 
how to use your other arm. To keep your shoulder girdle square and fairly still during throwing, it helps if you extend your other arm to the side and slightly backwards. If your throwing shoulder swings back and forth during the throwing action, you are asking your arm to throw a straight ball while its pivot is moving. This problem is accentuated if you tuck in your other arm. Pointing. Pointing is throwing your ball to get closer to the jack than the opposition. Given the variety of factors already listed, you need to give your ball the best chance of landing and running to where you want it to finish. The most crucial factor, once the ball has left your hand, is to land it where you should get the best contact with the piste, and so it is important to find a spot which will give you consistent and predictable bounce. You need to decide on your line of throw, walk along that line to pinpoint where you need to land the ball, and then return to the circle to throw. This means that you should be able to throw the ball any distance along that line and still finish where you want it to be. Coaching books tend to show three basic deliveries. A low point which lands perhaps a third of the way to the target. A medium, half lob point, which lands roughly halfway. And a high lob which lands much closer and only runs a short distance. There are, in reality, an infinite number of heights and distances between the two extremes at which the ball might need to be thrown. The judgment of the pointer is to decide the right combination of height and length which are needed to achieve the result. The higher the throw, the more steeply the ball will fall to the ground and the shorter the distance that it will run afterwards. Particularly with the high lob, it may help to bend and straighten your knees to assist with launching the ball skywards. The softness or hardness of the piste, the thickness of the cover and the amount of slope are all things which need to be taken into account and a skilled pointer will have worked all these out before they throw. Squat pointing. If you're able to squat down this method of pointing used by most of the world's top players gives a distinct advantage in being able to read the undulations of the piste and also allows you to release the ball very close to the ground if the conditions require it. Simply stand in the recommended way, one foot forward and the other at a slight angle behind, and bend your knees until you are almost sitting on your heels. Your lead knee should be pointing in the direction of the throw, and your other knee slightly downwards and at an angle of about 45 degrees. Keep your back straight, extend your non-throwing arm and go through the backswing, follow through and release routine as usual. Shooting. Shooting is the act of trying to remove an opposition ball by hitting it out. This makes the opponents play again and it can also be used to improve your score when they're out of ball or at least reduce their score if it's too difficult to point in. A skilled shooter will sometimes shoot the jack off the terrain to kill the end. This is employed when it looks as though their team is about to lose the game or perhaps to clinch a victory or a big score when the other side are out of ball. The shooter is less concerned about the playing surface than the pointer though they still need to be aware of what might happen to their ball if it lands short of the target. There are only very small differences in technique between pointing and shooting. The grip, stance, backswing and so forth are exactly the same. The main difference is that the shooter tends to bend slightly more at the waist to increase the amount of backswing because the body tilts forward and the arm can be drawn back further. They may also have a little more give in the knees to help with throwing the ball that much further through the air. Advice is generally to focus on the target, to clear the mind of distractions and to develop an easy relaxed swing which can be consistently reproduced. The mentality should be to loop the ball to land on the target rather than to hit it hard. A good guide is for the top of the trajectory to be at about head height. If the shooter can make their ball arrive steeply at the target, even if they miss, their ball may still be on the terrain and may prove useful later. 
With both shooting and pointing, it's useful to imagine the root of the ball before you play it, called visualisation, and then to replicate it in your throw. Basic tactics. In almost every circumstance, when you throw the first ball of an end, you need to try to put it in front of the jack. It makes things more difficult for the opponents, who may accidentally promote it towards the jack, or it may be there for your team to deliberately knock up later in the end. How far in front depends, as so often in tactical thinking, on the balance of abilities between your team and the opposition. If you think that the other team are lacking in shooting skills, you may decide to play it quite close, say 30 centimetres, in front, in the hope that they will miss a couple of times and waste ball. Sitting your ball right on the jack is not a good idea, because if the ball is shot, the jack will probably spring to a different part of the terrain and any ball previously played may be left behind and wasted. If you want to play an attacking game and persuade your opponents to try to beat it so that your consistent shooter can fire them out, then the ball can be in front but far enough away for them to decide to point rather than shoot. Your player may perhaps even replace the opposition's ball with their own, called a caro, to leave your side holding two points which may force them to play defensively. Your tactics, necessarily, are determined by the relative levels of skill of your team and the opposition. When or whether to shoot will depend on your level of confidence in a successful outcome. Other options may include trying to promote one of your own ball or trying to deliberately trail the jack to your own ball waiting further back. If you decide at some point that your team needs to defend, Usually because your opponents have rather more ball left than you, you need to find some way of protecting your balls so that they are less likely to get shot. If you put your ball close to their best one, preferably in an on position, but at least fairly close to the jack, they will have to point very well to score any more points, or risk shooting out their own ball and losing the end. As a last resort, placing your ball in line with the jack to make them worry about moving it accidentally if they attempt to shoot may be your best option. Teamwork Playing as a team is a vital part of the sport. Supporting each other, whatever the circumstances, is very important. And maintaining a positive feel in the team is more likely to turn things around than negative thoughts or criticism. Encourage good play and try to find something positive to say, even if things have gone wrong. Deciding on the most appropriate player to point or shoot, assuming that they still have a ball to play, is part of your tactics. And when to use your pointer, shooter or milieu, middle player, may make a huge difference to the outcome. When you are not playing a ball, it's important to stand together and look like a team. When it's your side's turn to play, discuss the possible options and allow the player in the circle to make the final decision since they are more likely to succeed if they feel that it's the right play for them. Take over the playing space when it's your turn to play and stand together quietly and respectfully without distracting when your opponents are playing. Remember that a game lost is a shared loss and a game won is due to the efforts of the whole team. Above all, enjoy the game and try to learn something every time you play, win or lose. Practices Pointing skills Let's look at some practice routines which can help to develop your skill as a pointer. It's important to be able to land your ball at almost any point along the line that you want it to take towards the target. So you can either mark circles or lay flat hoops on the playing surface at various distances from the throwing circle to practice trying to land your ball in them. An alternative is to mark a series of lines on the piece at different distances away and to try to land on each of them in turn to arrive close to a target circle or jack. You will quickly realize that the further the distance you throw through the air the steeper the landing angle needs to be to allow the ball to stop in front of the target. You will therefore need to let go of it later 
to give it the extra height which will create that steep angle. To practice high lobs, draw two lines at 5 metres and 7 metres from a throwing circle and attempt to land your ball over the first line and stop it before the second. You can make this competitive by scoring one point if your ball lands between the lines and three points if it stops before the back line. These distances can be altered to adjust to different surfaces or the varying abilities of players. Similarly, you can introduce an element of competition by drawing two concentric circles around a jack and scoring one for stopping in the outer circle and three for arriving in the inner ring. To encourage players to be in front of the jack, this can be amended to create a larger apron in front and almost no space behind it, or by giving high marks for being in the front half and lower marks for going beyond the jack. Another idea is to place a wooden batten no more than 10 centimetres behind the jack and only reward ball which don't reach the obstruction but are within a specified distance in front of the jack. If a player frequently drops the ball short of the target, place some sort of obstacle in the way which will prevent the ball from rolling on if it lands short. This tends to encourage them to let go later to lift the ball over the obstruction. If you have any equipment available, you can get players to throw through suspended hoops or over a bar or cane to land on targets. To develop a straight throw, lay poles or mark lines in parallel away and try to land ball in between them. If you have a straight follow through but still tend to throw mostly to one side of the line, let's say to your left, keep your swing exactly the same but turn yourself by moving your front foot very slightly to the right to bring you more into line. Shooting skills Players should be encouraged to try to hit a target ball directly, since this removes any need to worry about the playing surface or obstructed ball in the way, though there may sometimes be circumstances where a very low release and a run along the ground into another ball may be necessary or more effective. The concept of shooting should be to try to land on the target ball, arriving at a fairly steep angle, rather than to throw as hard as possible at it with a low flighted ball. To achieve this steep angle, you need to loop your ball with a fairly high trajectory, so that even if you miss, your ball has a chance of finishing somewhere on the terrain, rather than going dead over a boundary string. To encourage players to release quite late and arrive steeply, you can either get them to throw over a cane or pole, much the same as the pointing exercise, or lay an obstruction which they have to clear before landing. An early exercise is to place a piece of card on the ground, initially perhaps only four metres away, and get the player to land their ball on the card. After gradually moving the card to longer and longer distances, bring it back to a shorter range and place a spare ball on top of the card. The mindset should still be one of trying to land on the card. There just happens to be a ball in the way. If the ball is moved by a shot during the exercise, the aim should still be to land a ball on the card. Once success is achieved, move the target progressively further away as before. Ball can be arranged in line away from the throwing circle at a fairly short distance and perhaps 50 centimetres apart to begin with. The aim is to land on the back ball first, then the middle one and finally the front one. As the player becomes more accurate, gradually move the ball a little further away and then begin to shorten the distance between the ball. Expert shooters can pick out ball with a ball width about 7 centimetres between them. You can also put the ball in line across, initially at about 30 centimetres spacing, and shoot out the middle ball without touching the two outside ball. Then gradually reduce the gaps between the ball 
until there may only be one or two centimetres between them. This trains the shooter to throw a consistently good line, even more important as a skill than throwing the perfect length. Before you throw, you can help to improve your results by imagining the flight of the ball through the air to the target. You then release the ball along this flight path and hopefully repeat in reality what you have just imagined. This is called visualization and is used in other target sports such as golf, bowls and darts. If a player has a particular problem, it's the job of a coach to identify the problem and to set up some kind of practice routine which will help the player to correct their technique. <laughs>